Welcome everyone. You have Dan Bentley here and Tracy Newman from Impacto Consulting. Tracy's coming live from a Sydney lockdown at the moment and I'm in Melbourne and I'm free for once. So <laughs> something different. How's it, how's it all going up there, Trace? Look, uh, I got to say, uh, at least I have an expert on hand to give me advice. Um, and some of the strategies you said around, you know, being, being, um, I guess, making, being really focused on what you can do and taking on a project. I thought that were, was really good advice. So as much as I don't want to, this weekend, I'm cleaning out my wardrobe and I'm getting rid of all those items of clothing that I move around from house to house just because I love them, not because I actually wear them. <laughs> Again. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you only just moved up there from Adelaide, so <laughs> you didn't I know, that about and I brought a year ago. Of, <laughs> I know, and I brought lots of stuff because I I like it. Um, but I think you know you can only do that for so long. <laughs> That's true. Bite the bullet. That's true. I'll be interested to know how many loaves of uh, sourdough you've baked by the by the end of this lockdown. I, I think I was pumping out about two a week. <laughs> I've been making sweet buns, which is really bad. They're these blueberry filled buns that's just absolutely gorgeous, but yeah, not so good for the waistline. I saw that on Instagram when your story, that looked awesome. I thought you yeah. bought those. They looked really professional. Oh, yeah. Good work. That's All right. Well, I guess that's a good segue into what we're going to kind of talk about today, right? We're going to, we're going to be talking to you guys about um, creating space for creativity. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about it from a personal perspective. I mean, because, you know, basically in an organization, we're just a bunch of people, right? So we're going to talk about it from a personal perspective, but then also share some, some ideas on how you can create, uh, create space for your people so that they can be more creative. Um, so, so, yeah, Trace, what about, for you, let's talk about some of the things that you do that are creative and, and so maybe some of the things that, uh, you know, how, how do you set yourself up to be creative? It's interesting, actually, because... I, I'm probably not someone who's really ever thought of myself as being creative. Like I've enjoyed doing crafty things, um, but I've never, you know, I, I, I don't play musical instruments. I, you know, and, you know, I don't do a lot of the things that I guess tr people traditionally see as being really creative. So I guess I didn't really think of myself as being super creative. But one of the things that I love to do is actually, um, you know, create ideas and specifically join ideas together. So for me, one of the ways that I, I guess, create space for creativity is through creating space to have conversations and not outcome-driven conversations, just actually conversations like, you know, just listening to people and, and that I find always creates that, um, you know, creates that space for creativity in my brain. So what you're saying there is is that you're is this when you're meeting with people to brainstorm or this is just general conversations? Can you yeah, just elaborate a bit more on that? Sure. It's actually both. So I think brainstorming is, and you know, it can be done lots of different ways, is really great for generating lots of ideas. Um, but I find also that just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, not even with the intention of creating ideas, is really a creative process for me. So uh, and interestingly, I'm not the only one. I did some research a while ago on innovation and a lot of the, um, the, the, and they were actually specifically talking about scientists who were creating cures and what they found, even though they were really sort of, you know, rational and technical, is that a lot of the, where they got ideas for, you know, the next experiment and what to try next was actually just in passing conversation with the people that they work with. So, yeah, I think that's that's a common place to, to find creativity is actually just in, in, you know, saying something out loud and it's not even necessarily what the other person responds to. It's just that process that helps your brain to become more ordered when you verbalise things. Yeah, we do that all the time, don't we? We constantly yeah. have these phone conversations and we'll be talking about maybe a, just chit-chatting, I guess, and then one of us will have an idea and then the other person will build on that and then we'll kind of you know, by the end of it, have this whole new concept or, or thing that we want to try. And so, yeah, I, I, I totally get what you're saying there. That is a really helpful way of doing it. So it's not really deliberate, is it? It's just that we're giving ourselves some time just to, to talk and then ideas kind of come. Yeah, I think that's that as right. well. Yeah. Sorry, were you going to say something? 
Well, I was going to say that's one of the, the things that's really important to continue those conversations when you're not in the same physical location as somebody. So you and I kind of make those make the effort to have those conversations. Whereas I think, you know, one of the things that, that when, when a lot of people move to working from home, um, without creating those sort of routines to have those off the cuff conversations with each other, that, that sort of left a bit of a gap in terms of creativity. You know, there's a reason why people come up with their best ideas in the shower too, right? And that's because they're standing there just kind of in their, you know, just daydreaming, I guess. And it allows them to sort of take the pressure off, um, not the water pressure, but the, the mental <laughs> pressure and, uh, and stand there and just kind of like, you know, just ponder and, and wonder. And I think, yeah, I think, you know, that, that does work in the shower, but it works in many other different ways too, you know. I, one of the things that I really like to do, and I wrote an article about this a while ago, is just go out hiking. And I often take my dog and I've re- recently started just doing that by myself. And the, and the reason why is because when I go with a friend or something like that, we're in chit chat and we're, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of distracted. Whereas when I go by myself and it's just me and my dog, I'm really present. And I, I, I kind of tune into the, the nature and the sun shining through the trees. And it's kind of like that shower moment where I'm just alone with my thoughts. And in that space, I come up with some of my best ideas. And I also work through problems as well. You know, my head's just sort of just sitting there and there's, no, there's nothing else to distract me. I can just sort of work through things. And I find that really, really helpful creative process for me. And the other one as well is that I, um, I, I'm different to you in that I've always seen myself as a creative person since I was a kid. I've always was told I had a vivid imagination. I kind of got branded that. So I always have seen myself as that. And I do play musical instruments and I, and I write music. And sometimes in these videos, you can't see it today because I'm standing up, but usually you can see a couple of guitars behind me. Um, and I'm surrounded by musical stuff in here. But, uh, when I'm doing that, the most important thing for me to do is ring fence some time. So to give myself, you know, two hours or whatever time I can have and just sort of say to all of my, you know, relations, hey, I'm offline for the next two hours. I'm going to be doing this thing. I'll be out in two hours. I'll see you then. Um, and, and I think giving myself that space to be able to really focus, you know, put my phone on airplane mode, not check any emails, nothing. That is when your best ideas come. And I, and I think it is just about letting yourself go, f- focusing on one thing and, and not getting drawn into the commitments and the day-to-day life. I think that's where the best creativity comes from. I agree. And it's actually, uh, to your point about hiking, I find movement for me is really helpful. Um, I, I go for a run most mornings. Um, and like you, you know, that's kind of like my time. Um, and I find that I I have lots of different ideas and I've, I've if I've got a difficult situation that I'm working through, it's very rare that I could go for a run and not have a good solution at the end of it, you know, and it's not even that I'm necessarily even focusing on it. Sometimes it's actually that absence of focus that allows my brain just to work on it, I guess, in the background. Um, and then by the time I've finished, it's like, oh, what about this? It's like, wow. And yeah, for me, that's that comes from the movement, but probably also I'm pretty lucky I've lived near... Um, some pretty nice trails so I get to run on those each day as well yeah nice very handy during a lockdown when you have to when you can't leave your council area so that's pretty cool you know you know what you just said there too reminded me of something else I think people put a bit of pressure on themselves and I think that doesn't help creativity when you're under the pump you see it a lot with musicians right they come out with this amazing first album because they maybe didn't have a deal or you know they, they weren't having to have all this pressure from the commercial side of it, they were just able to work on their craft and focus and and do the best that they can. And then after that, their second or third album, just not as good. And I think there's, you know, this is just my own view on this, but I kind of feel like that's because that whole commercialization does put that pressure on them and then they're they're not as creative as they were on their first baby that they created. I, I found myself a while ago, I remember I had to do this talk and it was kind of like a TED Talk style talk. It wasn't a TED Talk, not yet anyways. Um, we're working towards it. Uh, but, you know, I, I did this talk and it was big. It was, it was across multiple locations and it was, it was going to be recorded. And, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a big deal. 
for me at the time. And I remember having to write it and I just couldn't, I knew what I wanted to kind of talk about, but I just couldn't write. I couldn't put pen to paper to get it out of my head. I just was like, oh, you know, it's sort of escaping me. I'm not really sure how to structure it. Anyway, it was a couple of weeks before I had to do this talk and I was like, all right, now it's getting a crunch time. I really need to get this done. And the pressure just wasn't helping me. And one day, I can't remember why I did this, but I just said, you know what, tomorrow morning, I'm not going to get up early and go for a run like I normally do on a Saturday. I'm going to go to bed late. I'm going to just wake up whenever my body wakes me up and I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing that day. And so when I went, when I woke up that morning, I think I got up, it was certainly like 8.30, it wasn't anything <laughs> dramatic. I woke up and I just thought I'm just going to lay in bed and just, you know, get up when I feel like it. Whereas normally I like to sort of get up, especially if it's a nice day, go and do things. And when I was there, all of a sudden, this talk, I just started almost speaking it. Like it just started coming out of my, my, out of my head. So I grabbed my phone and I opened up a note and I wrote the entire talk in about 30 minutes and I hardly even had to edit it. But I thought that, I think that was for me at the time was a really fascinating situation because whilst I'd made all this time to sit down and do it, I couldn't do it. But when I just took that pressure off myself, it was always there and it was able to come out. And yeah, that was really fascinating. That really opened my eyes at the time and it still does stick with me as something that I think about a lot because whenever I do feel like I'm in that kind of stuck mentality and I can't get what I want to say out, I quite often just go, maybe I need to release the pressure here. Maybe I need to stop trying so hard and actually just let it let it flow. I wholeheartedly agree. And for me, it's not the pressure about time. It's the pressure about quality. So if I, uh, and, and a while ago, I actually wrote myself a permission script uh, a permission slip so you know and and it basically just said I give myself permission to suck and what that means is that it's okay if I do it really badly and for some reason um, removing that pressure off myself to need to do something really well actually gets me doing it and it and as soon as I start it, it it's like it you know similar to you it's it's like you the dam disappears and it just flows but when I try really hard to do something really well that pressure just absolutely gets in my way mm. yeah I don't think it's helpful there's, there's a really good quote so what it says is creativity is a paradox serious art is born from serious play and I, and I really like that and the reason I put it there is when I'm sitting here doing my work for Impacto or I am doing anything that's creative here. This room that I'm in right now is kind of my creative room. So it might be that I'm writing music. That's my little reminder to help me remember that it, it's about play. It's not about being serious. I kind of feel like whenever I'm in that pressure, serious type mode, I'm probably not being my most creative. Whereas if I'm feeling like I did when I was a kid and I'm just playing, you know, especially with my music, go in there, no expectations, just put some time aside and just have a jam. That's when I create my best stuff. And even with our work, that's the same thing. When me and you were just, like we talked about before, just talking rubbish and just, uh, you know, throwing ideas around, that's when we do our best work too. We're having a good time. I think that's a really important part of, of the creative process. And it's interesting because sometimes when we're doing that, we're actually dealing with really important subjects and we're dealing with things that are, 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 you know, it's important work and there are people who really stand to benefit or lose off the back of it. Um, but if our focus is oh, we're doing important work, we need to be serious, we actually end up diminishing the quality. So it's like, um, you know, and I, th and I think I've, I've heard this saying and I'm not sure if it's one that, I, you know, I embellished on or made up or whether it's real and it's like life is way too important to be taken seriously and it, and it is actually like that so we do really important work which is why um, we can't take ourselves too seriously because that gets in the way of us delivering on that important work mm. yeah it's like when we're running an ideation session with with clients right like we will it's, it's all about getting them to loosen up it's all about them getting them to play to have fun you know, we, that's why we deliberately use a lot of, you know, colour and textures and, you know, those sorts of things that almost take them back to being a kid in a way. 
because yeah, if we do sit around with like um, just a whiteboard and a marker, it's it's too serious and people don't uh, let themselves go. I think, and that's that's what's as important. You got to really let yourself go and stop judging, stop judging yourself, stop critiquing yourself. Just get those ideas out there, and then you can go through a process after that where you can then look at well, are these any good? Yeah, I think that that's actually just taking me to another thing that I think is really helpful too is letting yourself just like don't judge as you're creating. I think that's important too. So we do that a lot in brainstorming sessions. We say no idea is a bad idea. Get them all out. But I think as well, if you're thinking about your own work or even if you're talking about, you know, making music or anything like that, I think it all applies, is that it's just about let it flow. Just let it all come out, get it all out, then go through an editing process after it. I find that's really helpful too because then you're not judging in the moment. You're just letting it flow just enjoying that process, then you go through after and go, right, these are the bits that I like and I want to keep. I think that really helps. I did a hackathon a couple of weeks ago uh, with a group of really amazing women looking at, um, you know, how can we create something to kind of disrupt. Um, and one of the the girls who was, was in my group actually just said, look, I can edit shit, but I can't edit a blank page. <laughs> And that kind of became our, our our motto for the weekend. So, you know, and it was really about, um, you know, when, you, when you're working with other people who you see are really talented and you really admire them and their skills, sometimes you do hold yourself back and, you, and you know, you don't want to look stupid in front of them, but you could be holding on to, to an absolute gem and you're really letting everybody else down by not just, just having a go. Um, and I love that saying, you know, just have a crack. You know, because it kind of indicates that just having a go is so, so vitally important. And like you said, there's there's filtering processes that you can use afterwards. There's editing that you can do afterwards. But um, if you try and judge and create at the same time, you kind of end up just getting stuck and then you're not actually achieving anything. Yeah, like those people that are writing a book and they're, they're on the first paragraph for a year because it's just not perfect. You know, you're better off to write write as much content as you possibly can and then go through and go, okay, this is how I'm going to sort of cut it up and this is the bit I'm going to keep and this is the bit I need to change and that sort of thing. That does seem to work better. So how do, how do we now sort of, I mean, that's some of the things that we do, but, and, you know, I guess that is relative, uh, relative to individuals, related, sorry, relatable to individuals, but what about in terms of how do you help your people create that space in an organisation? You know, what, what can you do as a leader to create space so that your people can create space to be creative? Yeah, I think um, you're right. It is personal in terms of what people do individually to inspire that creativity. But I think one thing that is universal is actually having space. So, you know, giving people permission to have a meeting where they talk about ideas and they don't actually have to have an outcome you know the outcome is a range of ideas and it might be that at the end of that period of time none of the ideas are good and that has to be okay because I guarantee you there will be some gems that happen in that in that space there always is Um, it might not be an idea it might be a conversation it might be an off-the-cuff comment it might be um, the process that you will go through and how that helps you to build a better relationship, there will be a great outcome. But actually just having that space without a designated outcome where people can just, um, you know, let let those sort of creativity juices flow and, you know, come up with ideas and not really judge them at that point in time, that can be really beneficial for an organisation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah, in, in within that meeting as well, people need to feel safe to be able to raise their ideas. They need to be able to, um, like you said, not have an outcome and, and not, we don't want to really be super critical in that, in that sort of a meeting either. We really want it to be, yeah, great idea and what else and what else and what else. And then at the end, the group can go through that and kind of go, this is what we think is best. I think as well, the other thing for me in an organisation is let your people play. You know, don't, don't stand there with a whiteboard marker and go, give me your ideas. You know, that, that's sort of a thing. I mean, it, it can work, but... It's very sterile. You're not really going to open it up. I'd give people, you know, there's a reason why we use post-it notes and a lot of other people use post-it notes because they're fun. They're bright colored. They're tactile. There's a whole heap of things that make it work in that sort of environment. So give people a colored marker, get them to draw pictures of their ideas, 
get them to explain them and pitch them to each other. Do things that create interaction and let people sort of drop their seriousness a bit, I think. And that's what I'd also suggest to do is just to sort of make it more playful and you'll get better outcomes too, I think. Um, and on that, because, you know, we're having a lot of these meetings virtually at the moment. So, you know, and you can still create play without being in the same physical room. So if you're all on a Zoom meeting, get everybody to use filters. You know, there's nothing like coming up with creative ideas with a cat filter on to, you know, remove the seriousness and, you know, uh, just sort of so encourage that um that that level of play in in those sessions so that it, it isn't all dry and it isn't all like oh well you know we're just going to write them all on the zoom whiteboard and um everyone has to kind of try and make everything work just give them a give them that moment of of connection and play and and specifically call out like okay so who's got some really rubbish ideas now or has anyone got some potentially morally bankrupt ideas that we can share because it's really interesting sometimes when you actually uh, ask people for really bad ideas and they give you ideas, often they can lead to really good ideas. Or um, if you ask people that, you know, what's something that's totally impossible that we'd never be able to achieve? You know, those sorts of prompts really get people to think broadly. And then, yeah, when you build on them, it can build into something really cool. I think I'd find it extremely hard to do a ideation session online with that filter that you had on the other day where you had a beard <laughs> and thick, dark eyebrows. I think I'd find it very hard to be creative in that environment. And I wish we could uh, quickly change that now to show the people that are watching this on video what that looked like. That was, uh, was pretty scary. Um, well, that was actually funny. It was the next time we went to get on a meeting, I, I still had the eyebrows and I couldn't remember how to get them off. And I was I was channeling that guy uh, that we saw who was uh, a lawyer who had the cat filter because his children had been on Zoom before him and he didn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> And it wasn't until you put your hand in front of your eye that we realised that the eyebrows were there because the eyebrow was on your hand. Because <laughs> it, was, it wasn't real, obviously. Um, yeah, I think the other thing as well, it comes down to capacity too. I think if you're running your people at over, you know, 100% or not over 100, but you know, you're at yeah, full capacity, it's going to be hard for them to be able to have, to be able to make time, to be able to give themselves space to think, if that makes sense. So if people just go, 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 back-to-back -back meetings, you know, back-to-back -back clients, whatever whatever that looks like, and they don't have any time to sit back and be strategic, I think that also isn't helpful for creativity. So ma ma managing, making sure that their workload enables them time for thinking is also really important. I remember we had a, a manager a while ago that, uh, her, her, this is when Tracy and I worked together years ago, before this, uh, actually said to me, Dan, you need to slow down because I was just a doer and I was just going and I was just had so many things I wanted to do. And what her advice to me was, which was really um, life changing and, and for my career and even just me as an individual, I think was you need to give yourself more time to think because then you're, you, what you're doing will be more effective. And I, and I really like that because it did, it did help me in that way that when I did slow down and I took more of that time rather than just doing, 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 I really thought about what I was doing. And again, we talk about creativity and ideas, my ideas and my, what I was doing became a hell of a lot more effective. So I think that's another one that I'd recommend too, but more so, you know, maybe not for you as the senior leader, but maybe for your people is to make sure you're giving them the space so that they can slow themselves down and have some time to think, not just be doing the business as usual sort of day-to-day -day tasks that you, that they might need to do for their role. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because sometimes when we talk about that with people, their natural reaction is like, well, that'd be great, but, you know, we're at full capacity. We, we don't have any alternative. But as you said, if you can be more effective, it actually creates that space. So it's like take the one step back to take two steps forward. Yeah, well, what's the cost if you don't allow them that time? That's what I'd be asking. What's the cost Absolutely. if you are running your people at 100%? They're going to burn out. They're going to burn out and they're probably not that effective. So... Yeah, that. Yeah, I agree, Trace. I think that's a really important thing to to recognise. And yeah, people people need to to you know, it's like running. You know, you don't run the same pace the entire long run that you go on. It's like you you might have bits where you're a little bit faster, and and then other times when you're you're not as as fast. I think that's the same with anything. You need to have you need to have rest. We can't just go at one hundred percent all the time. It's really important for leaders to see themselves as being creative. And to try and not 
um, I guess, disregard your own creativity because people follow you. You know, when you're a leader, you, you know, that, that's it by definition. So if you are that you're not creative and that you can't do creative stuff, it's really difficult for you to lead your people in that creativity. So I would, you know, in, encourage you personally just to think about, well, what are all the ways that you're creative? You know, it, it looks different for everybody. You don't necessarily have to be a great drawer to be creative. But if you think about a five-year-old, you know, all of them can tell you that, they'll, that they can draw. They can draw, they can sing, they can dance. You know, so somewhere in the middle there, you've, you've lost that view that you can do it. So I'd encourage you to try and tap into that so that you can lead creativity. Great. Well, this was meant to be a short podcast. We've ended up speaking <laughs> for almost 30 minutes about this. So, look, we, we, we really hope that was helpful, everyone. Um, look, go out there and, 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 and give some of these things a try. Uh, they are really simple. They are really practical, the things that you can start today. So, um, so there you have it. There's a few different tips. Hopefully, they're really practical things that you can start today and help yourself be more, help yourself be more creative and also your team be more creative. So thanks for joining us.